Um, so Yuichi is going to tell us about a large population of ALMA galaxies at redshifts greater than six with high O388 to C2 uh, flux ratios. Okay, so can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. So hello everyone, I am Yuichi Harikane. Uh, today, uh, so first of all, thank you for giving me this opportunity to give a talk. So today I will talk about our recent ALMA observations of high redshift galaxies and ISM properties of high redshift galaxies. Okay, so ISM properties, interstellar medium properties of high redshift galaxy is important to understand cosmic ionization. For example, the ionization parameter U ion is uh, maybe related to the escape fraction of the ionizing photon. And these ISM properties are usually investigated with rest frame optical emission lines, such as O3 and H alpha. However, these rest frame optical emission lines are red shifted to the mid infrared wavelengths, uh, where the uh, ground based telescope cannot access at red shift beyond five. On the other hand, as a far infrared emission lines, uh, such as O3 88 micron and carbon 2 158 micron, can be observed at redshift beyond five uh, with ALMA. And indeed, ALMA detects uh, all three and carbon to emission lines from several high redshift galaxies, uh, including the most distant emission line galaxy reported at redshift 9.11, and also the redshift 8.3 Lyman break galaxies uh, Tom, reported, uh, Tom showed in a previous talk. However, there are only six galaxies with both O3 and carbon-2 observations. So in this study, uh, we show more examples with, uh, uh, with uh, O3 and carbon-2 observations and study the ISM properties of such high redshift galaxies using uh, O3 and carbon-2 observations. Okay. Yes, so our targets are three Lyman black galaxies at redshift six uh, identified from our Subaru hyper Pinkham survey. As the Lyman alpha emissions are clear, uh, spectroscopically confirmed, uh, these three Lyman black galaxies are spectroscopically confirmed with Lyman alpha emissions uh, shown in this uh, bottom uh, spectrum. Okay. And we conducted ALMA observations uh, for these three target, targeting O3, carbon 2, and nitrogen 2 emissions. And here I show the result. So these panels show the emission line map of the O3, carbon 2, and nitrogen two of our three targets. Uh, we clearly detect O3 and carbon two emission lines uh, more than four sigma significance levels uh, whose positions are consistent with the UV counterpart. Nitrogen two emission lines are not detected. And these panels show the spectrum around the emission lines. Uh, we can clearly identify these uh, emission lines of O3 and carbon two and the red shifts are consistent with each other. Then we calculate the O3 and carbon to luminosities and compare with previous result. So both panels show the, uh, these two panels show the O3 luminosity and carbon to luminosities as a function of the star formation rate. And our redshift, uh, and our redshift six galaxies are indicated with these uh, red diamonds here. And other high redshift galaxies are indicated with these uh, red circles. And blue and green lines show the lo uh, lo local galaxy relations. So blue line shows the local galaxy, uh, local dwarf galaxy relation. And the green line shows the local starburst galaxy relation. So as you can see, O3, uh, regarding the O3 luminosity, uh, high redshift galaxies uh, show the comparable O3 luminosity to the low metallicity dwarf, uh, local dwarf galaxy relation with uh, this blue line. On the other hand, uh, regarding the carbon two, uh, most of the high redshift galaxies shows uh, carbon to luminosities lower than low metallicity dwarf galaxy relation. And the uh, carbon to luminosity is uh, more comparable to the low, uh, local starburst galaxy relation. Okay, so as a result, if we calculate the O3 to carbon to luminosity ratio, the O3 to carbon to luminosity ratio of the high redshift galaxies uh, more than uh, three to 10 times higher than redshift zero galaxies given star formation rate. So in this figure, x-axis is a star formation rate and y-axis is a ratio of the O3 luminosity to carbon to luminosity. So our uh, high redshift galaxies, including our three Lyman, redshift six Lyman break galaxies 
uh, shows are uh, indicated with these gray, uh, red points, and gray, uh, gray circles show the low, uh, red shift zero galaxies. So high red shift galaxy so shows uh, three to 10 times higher uh, O3 to carbon to luminosity ratio than uh, local galaxies. Actually, this trend is uh, reported in previous work by Nicolas Laporte et al. 2019, but this time we confirm this trend uh, with larger, sub, uh, larger samples. Also, very recently, uh, Stefano Cardiniani et al. 2020 uh, report a possible carbon to detections in some of high redshift galaxies uh, that were previously reported as upper limits. But if we use uh, the carbon to luminosities reported in Stefano Cardiniani's paper, then still it shows as a, as a higher O3 to carbon to luminosity ratio as on the local galaxies. So anyway, uh, it looks like the O3 to carbon to luminosity ratio of the high redshift galaxies may be higher than local galaxies. So this uh, high O3 to carbon to luminosity ratio may indicate some uh, evolution, redshift evolution of the ISM properties. So it's important to understand the physical origin of this high O3 to C2 ratio. So in order to uh, investigate the physical origin of O3 to high O3 to C2 ratio, uh, we, we conducted cloudy calculations. In order to make the discussion easier, I convert this plot to this plot. So in this plot, uh, the x-axis is a star formation rate, a carbon to luminosity to the star formation rate, and the y-axis is a O3 luminosity to the star formation rate. And red points shows a high redshift galaxies, and gray points show the redshift zero galaxies. And the right panel shows the cloud results of the cloudy cal calculations. It's a little bit complicated, but these lines uh, show the ratio at fixed metallicity and density with changing ionization parameters. So color shows the fixed metallicity, and the dotted, dashed, and solid line shows the different density. And if, for, for example, if we increase the ionization parameters, then O3 uh, luminosity increases while carbon to luminosity decreases. So if we increase the ionization parameter, it moves to this uh, direction, indicated with this red, di uh, red arrow. Also, if we in uh, increase the density, then both O3 and carbon to luminosity decreases. So it moves to this direction, indicated by this uh, red diamond here. Also, if we decrease the de uh, metallicity, then O3 uh, luminosity changes uh, to uh, decreases, while uh, carbon to luminosity does not significantly change. So among these three parameters, we found that a higher ionization parameter can explain the high O3 to C2 ratio. So compared to the local galaxies, 10 times or 100 times higher ionization parameter can explain the high O3 to C2 ratio. On the other hand, as a carbon to emission mainly come from photodissociation regions, PDR. So PDR covering fraction, CPDR, is also an important parameter. So if the PDR covering fraction is zero, then it indicates, that, it indicates that that galaxy has no PDR. So we found that a very low PDR covering fraction can also explain the high O3 to C2 ratio observed. So this is a schematic figure of the high redshift galaxies. So compared to the local, galaxy, uh, low metal, uh, local galaxies, high redshift galaxies may have uh, 10 or 100 times higher ionization parameter, making a larger ionized bubble, uh, making the larger H2 regions, was a very low PDR covering fraction. Uh, of course, the combination of these two scenarios is also possible. 10 times higher ionization parameter and 10% uh, PDR covering fraction can explain the observed high O3 to C2 ratio. Okay, so if the, this scenario is true, then lime alpha photons escape uh, from these galaxies. So in order to check this, this uh, scenario, we check the correlation between the O3 to C2 ratio and lime alpha equivalent width. And we found a possible correlation between these two quantities. So it indicates that higher ionization parameters or a lower PDR covering fraction can enhance the lime alpha escape and, and eventually lime and continuum escape from galaxies. So it indicates that all high O3 to C2 uh, ratio galaxies may uh, significantly contributing uh, to the cosmic reionization. Okay, so I will summarize my talk. So we confirmed high O3 to C2 ratio of the high redshift galaxies uh, with larger samples. And the physical origin may be high ionization parameter or low PDR covering fraction, uh, both of which are consistent with the possible correlation between uh, with Lyman alpha equivalent width. 
Okay, so that's it, and I'm happy to have questions. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have a quick question. Um, so how likely is it that um, part of this enhancement is due to a very extended diffuse component of C2 that isn't being detected on the ALMA data? Yes, yeah, it's a very good point. Uh, regarding our sample, our high, uh, Redshift 6 sample, uh, we use a uh, very large apertures uh, to cover the extended component of the carbon too. And regarding uh, uh, other uh, high redshift galaxies, uh, carbon to emission uh, luminosity are mainly uh, estimated with the CASA, uh, CASA fitting. However, if we have say, consider that extended emission, then still it shows, uh, yes, it still shows, yeah. So, so it still shows uh, some evolution indicated with uh, Stefano Cardinalis paper. So I think Stefano's uh, consider the extended emission, yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, so we have a question from Hayato Shimakuro. In the case of uh, redshift six to nine, O3 to C2 is higher than redshift zero. How about at intermediate redshifts? Mm, it's uh, an yeah, interesting point, question. So if it's just a monotonic evolution, then uh, intermediate redshift galaxies would be located here. But the difficult point is that it's very difficult to how say, uh, investigate uh, O3 and carbon to emissions of uh, these uh, intermediate redshift galaxies. Um, I'll just add, there are some measurements from uh, the PAC spectrometer at redshifts one to two that I will uh -huh. in the chat. Um, okay. Another question from Yorit, uh, interesting multi-line analysis and comparison to photoionization models. In your plots, you show equivalent width um, integrated Lyman alpha. Could you clarify how you measured the intrinsic Lyman alpha equivalent width for the object? Yes, yeah, it's interesting, uh, good point. Yeah, we uh, convert the uh, observed Lyman alpha equivalent width uh, to the in intrinsic uh, Lyman alpha equivalent width using the redshift dependent relations calibrated with the Lyman alpha luminosity uh, function and the UV luminosity function. A question from Christian Finlater. Is it possible that when explaining high O3 to C2, an ionization parameter is actually degenerate with an alpha enhanced ISM? Aha, uh -huh. yes. So I think it's related to, yeah, yeah, the, how say, the carbon oxygen abundance ratio, right? So, yes, yeah. Carbon, uh, the low carbon oxygen abundance ratio can have say partly explains high O3 to C2 ratio. But if we have say take the very extreme case of the lowest uh, carbon to oxygen abundance ratio, uh, still uh, some of the high shift galaxies uh, like these galaxies cannot uh, explain. So we need combination with other effects, I think. Okay, one last quick question from Dan Ko. Will NERSPEC definitively distinguish between high ionization and lower PDR covering factors? Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, NERSPEC can how say, measure the ionization parameters using O3 to, uh, O3 to O2 ratio, so we can de uh, degenerate uh, these two scenarios with JWST NERSPEC. It's very exciting, I think. <laughs>